after the NAC government ascended to power, the cabinet got down to improving a country whose economy was literally on its knees. The transport sector was top on the agenda, a sector that had been riddled with lawlessness and disorder. The public service vehicles were recklessly driven, with one ton speeding and overloading. Enter John Mishuki, the man who is credited with bringing sanity to the sector. For the period during which he served in the transport docket, the no-nonsense minister wasted no time. First, ensuring that the 14-seater Motatu vehicles observed uniformity through the yellow line, and next, introduction of seat belts. The orders which came to be known as the Meshuki rules weren't popular, but he did not stop there. He ensured the rules were observed to the letter. And the drivers knew that they had no choice but obey the rules. The number of accidents reduced considerably, according to statistics from the police department. It is when Meshuki left that insanity arrived. One major link holds the answer, enforcement. There has been laxity in enforcement of the law. We want to see in place a sustainable long-term program involving both the police and the general public. Where are the officers? Instead of enforcing the law, they are accused of contributing in perpetuating impunity by harassing drivers and demanding bribes. Even though most of the accidents have been attributed to human error, the causative factors would have been avoided. For example, for a country known for numerous roadblocks on all major roads, how does an overloaded speeding vehicle manage to evade all the roadblocks? only to end up rolling and killing all passengers on board? Where are the traffic officers? What does it take for the officers to ensure that passengers fasten their seat belts? More questions than answers. But the fact remains, more Kenyans are turning up dead along the highway in situations that could have been avoided in the first place. Rosalia Opondo, The News at Nine.